All right, everybody. Welcome back to, uh, you probably haven't heard of us. We haven't recorded uh, in a long time. We're Golden Dice. Uh, welcome back. It's episode 22, I guess. Uh, yeah, and with me, I've got my trusty sidekick, Tommy. Hey, who, who are you? Do I know you? Oh, well, I? I, don't, I really don't know what we do. or yeah. What's this about? Where we're from. This is a, a Star Wars Legion it's podcast. It's breakdown of the new Thrawn book. Is that what I'm on? This is Transformers CCG. Transformers CCG. You're welcome, Joe. Brought to you by Nismo Joe. <laughs> Brought to you by Nismo Joe and Brian. <laughs> uh, man, it's been uh, forever, and I, I want to apologize. It's I've been away for like the past four weeks. I've been away for three weeks, I think. Something like that. Uh, with work dragging me into Cleveland and then doing camps and stuff like that. So I've been, I've been crazy busy and haven't even had a chance to, uh, to record it all. So I apologize for the, uh, the lack of content. Yeah. And, uh, I could have picked up the slack, but I didn't. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. But we can always circle back to, you have a kid and it's like, what does Shane I, do? I do have like, a kid. I do have we, a kid and work has been pretty crazy for me as well these past few weeks and still this week. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be away again next week. I was trying to record, see if we could record two this week, but I think that was just a lot um, for our schedule. So, but uh, I don't know if there'll be one next week. Correct? Will we not be streaming? Yeah, we're looking to stream on Saturday of our store championship. We have another one coming up Um, and we're working on it. I'm going to test it out at at Joe's tomorrow and just see what it looks like. See if it just, you can tell what's happening and we'll kind of go from there awesome um so yeah if you're looking for destiny games you can check our it'll probably just be on twitch because it'll probably be from my phone that we're recording um or streaming but we'll see we'll we'll keep you updated of course that'll be on facebook and twitter um as always but uh but yeah so we're back dude it feels good to record man it feels like going from i mean worlds was in may and then like I still played a decent amount and then like late June hit and I've just been crazy busy and then July has been like nowhere. So I just feel like I'm completely out of funk of this game a little bit when I play my games. I get that. I, I feel the same way. I'm uh, I'm a little out of it, but I, I got to be honest, I was dragging coming into this uh, recording and I feel a little rejuvenated. This is exciting to, to just talk <laughs> with you about Destiny. I enjoy it. Yeah, man, it's like uh, January 1st again or whatever, <laughs> whenever we recorded our first one. <laughs> it's like that first week of January. Um, but yeah, so I had, well, we're going to talk about our store championship uh, that we went to at Top Deck Games where uh, it was a good time. There was people from Kappa Cup there giving away prizes. You know, uh, Ray from Jackalman and Kevin from Jackalman were there and the Arrowbrook guys were there. Uh, it was a really good time. But uh, yeah, I'd been away for two weeks at this point. Way of the Force released on a Thursday, and I left um, Sunday to go somewhere. Um, so I had like three days of games, and obviously I didn't play all three because I had to pack and get ready to go away for work and stuff like that. And so I got back from these two weeks of being away, and I was like, what deck am I going to play? And rather than run something like simple, like Kylo Price, I decided I was going to do Hero Vehicles, man. <laughs> it, was, uh, <laughs> it started off pretty rough. <laughs> Yeah, I and, thought that uh, was an odd choice for you. That's not really one. Yeah, I feel like you're you're the guy who always picks up he- hero vehicles throughout a meta, and you're like, this is a cool deck. And it's like, you know, there's a lot going on, and there's a lot of moving parts and pieces, and I get to do all this crazy stuff. And then you play two or three games, and you're like, yeah, vehicles just isn't for me. I feel like that happens like once a meta with you. I still stand by the fact that I didn't like and don't like that Ayla Rose Ezra one. But I've been having a blast with this Yoda Rose Gungan one. Like it's been a lot of fun for me, and even like the drive-by shooting, like the uh, Yoda Ezra rookie pilot one. That one hasn't been too bad. But I definitely did not enjoy vehicles until this set, and and it has been fun. But it was definitely hard playing one game with my fiance before the store champ start, and then trying to uh to get going. It was definitely uh not ideal. And then of course I play Paul from Arrowbrook as my first game, so it's not like I had a an easy time. <laughs> yeah, I play so I played uh yeah, Yoda Rose Gungan and first round I play Paul from Arrowbrook and he's running Kylo Price. And it was actually a close game. I, I it was one of those games where I felt like I was building my board state pretty well. He had two 
two CQAs for like three. I think both of them were three. And honestly, they didn't even hurt that bad. It was more, I just rolled poorly right after that. Like even with Yoda, a- after that, I would roll out like a Yoda disrupt and discard. I was like, all right, I can't focus any of my dice now. So at that time, I proceeded to roll out like a blank with my like speeder crate, you know, a shield with, you know, the T-47 airspeeder. So it was just like stuff that killed me. And it was too much to come back from. But the game ended up being super close. Going into just before the last round started, I could have killed him if I hit either the two indirect or the two range on my speeder crate after he had already claimed. But alas, I did not. And I didn't have anything to pitch to re-roll with. And we went to the next round. My Gungan had two health left. He activated Kylo and won. And that was my uh, that was my first round. So, uh, you know, Paul's a good player, so it's not like something to be upset about. Super close, but uh, it definitely feels bad losing a close game after not playing for two weeks because then part of you is like, ah, I feel like I could have had that if I actually had practice with <laughs> this deck and the Destiny just in general. Yeah, and it always hurts to lose first round until you come into a, an event and you, it kind of steals your, your steam a little bit kills your mojo but yeah i mean paul is a is an awesome player so i got to play paul later in the event as well so i can uh, attest to that would you uh what did you come with tommy and would you do a uh, first round uh i brought afro vehicles um we had a few different uh pet projects of mine i was trying to do some off the wall stuff i had a snoke double executioner deck that i was uh very high on until scott came over and just stopped me with it like literally six straight games he stopped me with uh kylo price and and he basically we came to the conclusion that kylo price would be pretty heavily represented and then the actually the the battlefield ruling came after that so we we really knew that kylo price was going to be heavily represented so i had to switch off that deck and the other thing that i had been working on was uh afra so i came with a uh last minute change to snoke uh, elite snoke uh single die afra single die battle droid is what i brought to the event uh, so I went full rainbow vehicles and I, every, every support I ran was like a two cost or less, um, with the exception of, I think one, uh, slave one and the two hail fire tank droids. Um, so I, it was very, a very low cost curve vehicle deck, similar to how the hero decks ramp. And I think I got like seven test games in the night before, which was all I had played. Um, with the deck and it was ramping like a machine i was winning games on round two i had like four or five supports out it was pretty it was pretty insane the ramp that it that it uh it pulled off so i felt good going into the day round one i played uh eldis um our buddy who we've mentioned multiple times great guy he was also playing kylo price um Basically, I, I ramped a little slower than i would have liked but still decent enough um i got some early droids and um he had some good rolls. My big problem in this game was that I wasn't able to remove multiple dice or affect multiple dice uh, when I needed to. When he would roll out big, I, I uh, had to I could mitigate one die and then I had to take the rest, which set me back and was able to he was li- able to eliminate my Snoke pretty early. But um, going into the last uh, the last round of the game, um, my battle droid had three health left, two shields. I had six cards left in deck. I had an Archangel on the table. He had uh, four life left on Kylo. I had Archangel. I had um, BT-1. I had triple zero. I don't remember the rest, but those are the three important ones that I knew. I hadn't seen a partnership all game, so I knew I had that. So when I partnershiped, rolled out my battle droid, rolled out the Archangel, rolled out BT-1 and triple zero. BT-1 automatically did two damage to Kylo. All I needed to do was hit two damage of any kind, um, and I would be able to resolve that in that uh partnership window and i i hit i hit it and that was that game uh eldest was not pleased that that's how it ended but it was a super tight game and it was uh it was close dude we love eldest you should have just conceded man i should have just conceded i did i I, (laughs) I thought about it and then i um i i decided not to um question for you tommy so you mentioned that you ramp pretty hard um and since it's a little bit different of a deck, like if I said I ramped hard in Hero Vehicles, you're probably like, oh, you run Chance Cube, and then I said I had Rose and, Ez- or Rose and Yoda, so that's pretty obvious how I can ramp. Mm-hmm. Now, I know you have uh, like Snoke Power Action, but Droid doesn't have a resource, and you Correct. just have Afras. Yeah. Uh, was there anything else that you had in there that helped you ramp? Yeah, so um, obviously, like you said, the Snoke Power Action on Afra. Actually, a- Afra's die itself is, is pretty solid. I mean, if you get the two shield side or the two-for-one gun, those are the only two that you don't 
really feel amazing about power actioning, mostly because you don't want to spend the resource on the two gun and the shield is kind of a sideways maneuver, but she's got the discard. She's got the resource. She's got the indirect. So she can, she has three excellent sides uh, for Snoke's power action, in my opinion. And likewise with the droid, he's got the one range, one indirect, one indirect, plus two indirect, any of those three black sides. I'm very happy to power action and just kind of, uh, you know, accelerate damage on my first turn is I'm fine with that. If I don't hit the resource or the discard on Afra, I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that. Um, but the other way I would ramp would be a uh, chance cube and weapons factory alpha. It turns out that my deck is actually pretty strong in the roll off. Um, so quite often I'd win and I would take uh, my battlefield because it's effectively almost like starting the game with, um, uh, what is it? Uh, c connections, right? What is, I can't remember the name of it. Why can't I think of it? The Lando plot. <laughs> uh, the Profitable Connections. Profitable Connections, because I get uh, Weapons Factory Alpha, so I get minus one on the first vehicle. Afro gives me minus one on the first droid, so it's almost like having four resources first turn. Granted, I have to have the pieces in hand, um, but with Afra's ability to draw cards throughout the turn, and me including quite a few cards that would allow me to do that, um, I was able to have some good turns where I would hit two sometimes three vehicles if i got a chance cube out early in the in the game on my first turn well vehicles droids supports but yeah that's it's it's not rocket science how it ramps it's mainly just yeah. selecting my battlefield i played kylo price three times in the day so it's really a no-brainer what battlefield i'm gonna uh pick if i win the roll off even though i didn't win the roll off in my next two kylo price games um but yeah it just uh it it, it definitely helps so you played kylo price Three times. Three times, man. That was I was so happy I didn't bring Kylo Price because mere matches of that just doesn't seem uh yeah it doesn't very seem fun. fun. Now I I actually like the Kylo Price matchup for my deck. I don't think it's a, necessarily a bad matchup. I think my my one blind spot is that I need a way to affect multiple dice because Kylo has you know fifty percent damage sides, so there are going to be turns where he just rolls into you know five different dice showing damage. So I do need a way to. Uh, mitigate better but other than that i think that the matchup is favorable for my deck yeah i mean you got rainbow in there yeah rainbow three so. characters decent amount of shields but go ahead why don't you go in the round two jack yeah round two i now play drew from arrowbrook gaming um this one had a little bit of extra spice to it because the jackman guys decided to challenge us to a uh, pizza bet i guess you could just call it yes, <laughs> um it was basically that it, originally, if if Shane came, we would have had three, and then it would have been yeah. Ray and Kevin. Can I can I pause and, there for a second? Oh, let's pause. Let's, let's, let's pause. Just emphasize if Shane came. Three words. If Shane came, he didn't. The end. Go ahead. Continue. This was supposed to be monumental for the podcast, and like he blew it, dude. Yep, he's not coming this week either. He's not coming this I, week. He was like, "I'll oh, go to the I world can, Tuesday night." I'm like. Tuesday night no, store championship not. is not a store championship. Even if you did yeah. go, that's a that's a weekly it's a weekly local. tournament with uh yeah. with a prize kit with a prize. With store that's all that is. I can hear Alan slamming the keyboard defending Shane He's right like, now. Shane is the best. <laughs> um, hey, tomorrow he'll be uh, posting something on Facebook saluting Shane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the you magnificent <laughs> bastard. I, lo I love that though. I love that face. That it makes me smile every time. Agreed. Um, well, oh, the teams for uh, the pizza bet. So, yeah, so originally it was going to be three on three, so they had to add somebody else. So they added Drew from Arrowbrook. And last minute, Shane didn't come, so we added our friend Scott to – I mean, really, we could have dropped Drew, and then it would have been just two on two, but that's not yeah. fun. So I don't know why um, we went three on three, but I was like, whatever. Yeah. Scott is, yeah. you know, like my number one playtest partner, so who else? Yeah, we are fine with that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, this had some extra spice to it because uh, I guess we were tied. At, I don't really remember what happened at this point because I think we I mean behind. me and Drew were you both got, obviously oh one. Got lost both round one. I was the only one that won, and I think I think all Kevin three and of them. Or no, Kevin lost, so they were up. I think Kevin lost. Well. By one so we're tied. If you and Ray both win, I think yeah, Scott lost. You lost, okay. and I think yeah, we, I won. Ray won, and I think uh, didn't. I oh, know Drew did not win his first round. He did not. Yeah, because I'm about to play him. Yes. We're at the scrub table. Yes, so we um, are, you are correct. <laughs> but but either way, so it's obviously a big swing game because then tiebreakers are like, you know, if we played each other, you know, what side won. Yeah, I don't know about and, you, I want uh, some damn pizza, so. 
Yeah, dude, I wanted pizza too, so I just pulled through real hard and got absolutely creamed. It wasn't even close. <laughs> yep, and we let you have it afterwards. <laughs> dude, it was – seriously, it was not close. Like, it was one of those games where I was just, like, literally sitting there the entire time. I was like, why am I playing this deck? Literally, the end of the game, I had two, like, T-47 airspeeders out, and that was it. And he had, wow. like – he had, I don't know, five damage on um, Luke and like four on Ray. Like he was playing Luke three, Ray two. So uh, steps, I think, is what it is called now. Um, elevators coming soon. Ele- <laughs> escalators. escalators and escalators will be the next two hit two sets. Be lifting. Um, <laughs> but yeah, his was. I mean, it was like. It was tough because he could roll out, do a decent amount of damage, and then still grab two shields with Luke's. And then I'm doing indirect, so he can just eat half, you know, half my damage going in. Um, and it was just rough. I didn't see rally aids at all till late, and it was just not, not good. No CQAs or anything like that. Anything tricky it was just he was shielding up and still dishing out a good amount of damage. And yeah, I just didn't have many answers to what he did, and he he steamrolled me. It's not close. And so now I'm O2. You're O2, and this is when I I felt like as as you know Jack's uh, older you know influence. Not I don't want to say mentor because Jack spanks me when we play in events, but I felt like I needed to step in and give Jack a little pep talk here. So <laughs> I step in and I said, Jack, um, if you lose three more, you're buying all the pizza, and I'm not pitching in anything. Um, it's Both you and Scott me. just start and freaking out. Yeah, <laughs> that was uh, that was how we that's how that went down. That's how our pep talk went. We kept it real positive, um, not at all, and that's it. I don't want to give away anything, but it might have worked. It did work. He responded. <laughs> so round two, um, for me, I played a gentleman by the name of Andrew who plays over at the store that we previously mentioned um, in Conshohocken, in Pennsylvania. Uh, I forget the name of the store, but they're holding their store championship on a Tuesday night. And I think... Uh, alternate Universe, I think yes, it's called? Yes, Alternate Universe. He was playing R2P2. Um, he said he was relatively new. I don't know... Um, about when he started playing. I think he said he's been playing for like two months or something. They have like longer hair a little bit. Did he, was he the guy that won the box? Yes, he was. He did win yeah. a box. They raffled a box. That's, the prize support was insane. Top deck. You guys are, are the best. That was insane. I played him round four. And yeah, top, de- top deck did a fantastic yeah. job. And then that. the Kappa Cup raffles. It was just, they were just handing stuff out. And then we won pizza. It was great. Oh, spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm playing Andrew and uh, it's R2P2. It was a pretty, um, straightforward game what the game came down to was I, I ramped well again um and not like insane but solid enough but i hit a, an afro discard um on my second turn ripped three and then i hit an afro discard on the third turn and ripped three and both of those rips uh hit all mitigation cards i hit literally six mitigation cards uh with those two actions and he couldn't stop uh the storm of indirect and it just you know, his house of cards crumbled, uh, and that was the round. And he, it was a great game. He was a very nice guy. It just uh, was unfortunate that I hit those indirects. And, and you know, a lot of the blue um, removal requires his dice to be in the pool, so, like, he wasn't able to guard me. Um, and quite often, uh, going into the turn, the first thing I'm going to do is roll out Afra to either try to hit the resource side or the discard side um, because they're at their highest value early in the turn, I think. So... Um, I was rolling out before he was having a chance to put a die in the pool to limit his mitigation. I know he had the red package as well, but a lot of that hits uh, damage sides. So that was that. So you storm out to 2 0, baby. 2 0. Woo. And then Scott's 1 1 at this point. I'm 0 2. And I think they matched us. I think Kevin's 0 2. Ray's 2 0. And I feel like we were behind at this point, but I don't know why. I thought we were. No, I think it was. I think it was the next round. I don't remember, but I just remember them being ahead because then we talked about tiebreakers. Okay. Uh, but either way, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we know the final score. You know, that's all that matters. <laughs> um, <laughs> so going into round three, um, I play one of the Kappa Cup guys, and he's running Tarkin Jabba. Um, he seems to, as we were talking, it's not Destiny's not really his thing. He more does his promotional stuff, and we'll kind of play if he's at like a Destiny tournament like this. Um. But yeah, I mean, you know, he did fine. It was kind of weird because his mill was kind of oriented to choking out the characters, and I had vehicles. Like, he played, like, prize possession and stuff like that, which had uh, little to no effect on, you know, my de- deck and what it was doing and stuff like that. And 
he just wasn't able to really get going a mill or anything like that. You know, I was definitely able to pay to um, remove his blackmail anytime he rolled that out. So it was just tough for him. He didn't really get anything going. And uh, even though it was the mill deck, it was pretty, uh, pretty one-sided actually in my favor uh, rather than the typical what you would think of a mill deck against vehicles. But I sat down and I got salty because I was about to be like, oh man, I'm about to go 0-3. <laughs> But uh, pulled it out, and uh, yeah, so I'm sitting at a uh, one-two at this point after talking Java. There you go, your first win, and the pep talk worked. Pep uh, talk worked, dude. <laughs> I'm t- somehow I'm taking credit for that. I don't know how, but I'm I'm being a jerk. Like take that. it, just take uh, it. Round three, I played um, Paul from Arrowbrook with Kylo Price. Um, I don't remember. I, th- I think we were on his battlefield, but I'm not positive. Um, he, I, I had a slightly slower ramp. I only played one vehicle turn one or one support turn one rather. And um, I got off to a little bit slower start than I did in the previous games. And it just was kind of a grind fest. There was one turn where he rolled out into maybe eight ish damage. And like I said, I was having a hard time removing um, multiple dice. So uh, eventually I just got behind. It was close at the end. Um, he had just Kylo left with like three ish life left. I'm not positive exactly. Um, and I had, I think just Afra at that point. And he just, he just, he just stopped me at that point. Um, he got some decent Kylo pulls. Not, he didn't really get very lucky. It just, the game just kind of went his way. Um, good, solid game. Super nice guy, actually, to play against. Very, very, um, not loose, but very, like, uh, casually welcoming, I would say. Like, he was very, like, you know, he didn't, it didn't feel like it was high pressure. Like, he was going to scrutinize everything you did. So, it was a, a nice, uh, friendly game. And uh, I got my first loss. Yeah, Paul's great like that. We even played at Worlds, and it was just the same way. Like, yeah, I mean, there was tension, obviously, because it's oh, Worlds, yeah. and it was day I mean, two, stakes. but he was still great. Yeah, but he's, it just, it was really, um, like I knew, I knew who Paul was because um, I'm a fan of their content. I think they do great content content in Arrowbrook. Um, it was the first time I actually ever met him. But um, going into the game, I knew he was going to be a good player. And sometimes you, you play a good player and it, it gets um, tense, not necessarily in a bad way, but like a competitive way. And, and like I, I like being competitive, so I'm perfectly fine with that. But Paul was very um, welcoming and, and, and like diffused that tension a little bit. So it was really cool. Give you a nice shoulder rub and everything. And well, that was Elvis. Elvis was rubbing my shoulders the entire time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think this at this point is when we draw behind because then I think both Drew, I think Drew went on and played Scott, beat him. You lost. And I think Ray won and Kevin had a bye. So it was, <laughs> it was like at this point, we started to just get way behind in the bet. But, uh, it gave me a chance to yell back at you guys and then yell at Scott because we now have the same record. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we go on to round four, and this is where I play the R2P2 uh, that you had mentioned that you played earlier. Oh, okay. And um, yeah, it was pretty back and forth. He had some good plays, um, but it was kind of tough for him. I feel like he didn't ramp as well as he would have liked. And there was a point where he played an heirloom on Poe as I was going after him. And then when he died, he realized that it didn't move over. Um, didn't have redeploy unless it was on a blue character. Uh, so he kind of lost that without that needing to happen. There was, you know, there was really no reason to put it on Poe. He could just put it on Ray. So just stuff like little things like that he missed. And then to end the game, he claimed it, but he could have ancient. But I still think I would have killed him because I had two vehicles in my hand that I could have played as well. Um, so I think that was largely uh, not an impact on the game. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he, he seemed to do well. I love seeing R2P2 still floating around a little bit. Um, yeah, I thought he did well with it. Just a few misplays, that things that can be uh, tightened up. And I just, this can be a tanky deck, but I think I got it going real early and just kind of overwhelmed him with the amount of damage that I was doing. Nice. And I'm 2-2. Two, two. Uh, I'm back. Round four, I think I play Andrew's Metamate. I think his name is George. It, I, I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure I'm like 85 that it was George uh, playing Thrawn Snoke. Um, we, uh, I think we played at his battlefield. Um, 
which was uh, is a docking bay where you get a support back from the discard, reducing the cost by one. Yeah, yeah docking bay. It was docking bay. Um, he had a uh, good ramp first turn. I really didn't have a good answer for his um, for his uh, thrown dice, so I just had to accept the fact that he was ramping. He also played a chance cube turn one, um, dropped a orbital or planetary bombardment. Um, when he activated Thrawn, he called three. I'm not sure if he, he knew what was in my deck or not. Uh, he did hit the slave one, but I was 100% fine with that. I was much more concerned about him hitting mitigation. Um, so, uh, at that point, you know, I know that I need to ensure that no matter what I do, I can just remove that planetary bombardment die every single turn. Um, and I did, uh, with a, an array of, uh, you know, flank, hidden motive. My removal package is very suited uh, to remove that one giant die, not so much when it's a big spread. Um, and I ramped extremely hard this game, having five supports out on turn two. And I think I kill him early turn three. There you go, living the dream. Living the dream. Thrawn Snoke is powerful, although I, I don't... Yeah, I don't think I'm sold on the planetary bombardment build, though. It just seems too much in a one basket. It is a lot in one basket, but theoretically, if a, if a deck runs, say, eight removal cards and Thrawn can pick one every turn, as long as you're calling the correct number, be it, you know, zero, one, occasionally two, I think that you can make it work. Um, but it's it's tough. I mean, also, you're trying you're trying to get multiple vehicles out. Like, it's really not like all planetary. You can play a planetary turn one and then follow it up with like a hail fire or an arc the following turn, plus maybe something else small. It's it, it is doable. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, it depends what their mitigation package is. Like, I still say you best defense Thrones dice if you can first turn. Um, oh yeah, if you could keep him off, and that's the same thing with my deck too. Like, if you could just take if you best defense like Yoda's dice turn one. Like I really slid, then I'm just roll dependent on stuff. Yeah, it's tough. Um, I don't know if that that's the right call every time, but like I know Paul did that to me a few times. He best defensed and overconfidence, and was just kept getting rid of my Yoda dice, and it was really hard for me to uh, to get things going with against him at times. Mm -hmm. And so the same thing with Thrawn, of course, is he's the the money bags in that deck. Yeah, and I mean um, I, Snoke is helping you kill Thrawn, um, so there is that part of that matchup like you are if you're pinging through on i am I, i'm fine with that i mean you're getting lots of cash but i am gonna it is accelerating his death hopefully you don't have the uh dark ritual but. yeah i think that's the one deck where like at least one two character snoke deck where you don't feel bad about pinging your your guy like yeah, i don't know cad snoke is weird because once cad dies your damage output is just like you know, done at that point, unless you yeah. get three redeploys or whatever. Well, even, but, uh, even with the redeploys, there's, a, there's an awful lot of modified sides on those weapons. Yep. Um, you know, as you look at them all, I, I think it's like one on each or something like that. But there's really no like high value damage sides on any of the redeploy guns from Cad Snoke. But, you know, if you're sticking down even just a Hailfire tank, like that's that's going to help you finish the game. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I, yeah, I think Thrawn's still the first target. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, any other things on uh, round four? No, no, I'm back to 3 1 now. So I have a, a chance, presumably, at making a uh, top cut. Let's see what happens, dude. <laughs> Why well, you gotta laugh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I go into the last round sitting at 2 and 2, and I play Kylo Price against Paul, who is also from Alternate Universe. It seemed like a bunch of them uh, came on over, which is not a bad commute uh, for them. Not Maybe on a Saturday. Or so. On a Tuesday night, that's that's not a great a little different. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, he played Kylo Price, and it was weird because things started off really slow for me. Back-to-back uh, -back rounds, he hit a motive and got rid of my crate speeder, wow. um, which was tough because it's only... 33% chance on both of them to get rid of it. Uh, so I definitely was feeling a little salty at that, sitting at two and two and both of my uh, uh, crate speeders getting removed. But um, as the game went on, I just kind of built up my board and he took a few turns pitching a reroll, which gave me time to 
get resources for you know different areas of removal and play stuff when I wanted to rather than feeling the pressure of uh, him just rolling out damage. Um, I don't think his Kylo really got a lot of calls. Uh, against Paul, it seemed like I drew a lot of the same color at the same time or always had a decent amount of red cards in my hand. And I, I definitely have majority red cards. Uh, but this one, they seem to have happened been happened to have been a little bit more spread out, and I was able to maybe play one red card before uh, he activated Kylo some turns. So I just kind of had that going for me, and uh, yeah, just another thing overwhelmed uh, him and was able to remove some of his dice, and I killed Arinda Price pretty quickly, and Kylo uh, followed soon after that. And uh, but it, it was still a good game, of course, but. Um, yeah, I think I just was able to ramp like v- hero vehicles can ramp with Rally Aid. Nice. I, lo- I love that list. I Like I said before, the, the Yoda, Gungan, uh, Rose deck, my only fear is Mill. Uh, but other than that, I really I really like that deck. Um, my round five opponent was uh, Frenchie. Another Kylo Price. My third Kylo Price of the day. At least I got a little break in between each Kylo Price. Um, we are, uh, on throne room again. I don't know how I keep losing these roll offs because, uh, I should not be, <laughs> but I keep losing the roll off to the Kylo price deck. Um, so we're on throne room. Um, same thing. There is one big turn where he gets a lot of damage off. Um, and the, the one thing I can say about this game is that he, Frenchie did get fortunate with his, uh, his Kylo pulls. I managed my hand uh, to the best of my ability. I'm positive that I didn't make any misplays on that front. Um, I was holding my chance cubes. I was holding my flanks. I was holding gray cards. There was never a turn where I had more than two of any card in my hand um, or any any color in my hand. So, I mean, it was not a high percentage chance. Um, and a lot of players early in the game uh, were calling blue and red against my deck when they probably should be calling yellow just because of the nature of the droids and and some of the vehicles are yellow. Um, So they usually start with blue and red and Frenchie uh, followed suit, started I think with two reds and hit both when I had one red card in hand on each of those, uh, which set me back a little bit. It is a little frustrating when that happens, but um, the game got real close. Uh, He had the big rollout, big damage. I ramped mediocrely, um, pretty average, probably um but winnable in a winnable scenario um but at the end of the game uh he had a cross guard out and we're on throne room we're going into the next turn he rolls out uh with with kylo he uh hits the color deals the damage and i know that his next uh action is claim didn't matter because he also rolled out uh damage on kylo's dice um so that was pretty much it he only had, I think, two life left, so it was another close game, but I just couldn't eke out the uh, the Storm of Damage. I just couldn't match his pace from the Kylo um, ability, so that's how that one ended, but Frenchie's awesome, and I love him, and I've never uh, not enjoyed playing a game with him, and he's a really talented player, and he has stolen my thunder in the last round of the last three tournaments I've played at Top Deck. Dude, you just got to fight him, dude. I know. I should. <laughs> I'm coming for you, Frenchie. Fisticuffs. Did he make? Did he play in the final? Yeah, or he played. Actually, my losses were to first and second. It was uh, Paul and Frenchie won, one two. The top four at the end of that were three Kylo Price and then one Elite Yoda and then a Cassian and single die Anakin. Yeah, that was our buddy John who uh, hasn't been playing very much and then just suddenly showed up and was wrecking people with Mill. It's hilarious. Yeah, he came over yeah, to get a couple secret play <laughs> test sessions in. Yeah, four one top of Swiss at the end of the day. Yeah, he was number one, going in the top cut. And then, and then it happened. Mm-hmm. Then he punted it. <laughs> he did he? He misplayed a little bit, and the uh, in the in the last in the best of three in the third game against Paul, he he misplayed pretty hard. Um, but you know, I think that was just his rust showing, and and you know the fatigue of a long day, and it's a lot easier for everybody watching the game to see the play. No matter how trivial yep. it is, it's it's always easier to see the play when you're watching than it is to see it while you're playing. So John, John had a great day. I was really proud of him. Yeah, I mean, he didn't play a, a single game of Legacies, did he? Um, not at like any real event, no. And that's Legacies was long. Yeah, so he hasn't. 
<laughs> he hasn't played in quite yeah, some I mean, time, so it was awesome to local, see that. But that was about it. I don't even remember him coming into a local. He did. He did a handful. I mean, this is and this is barely when I was gum, gum, coming to locals anymore because you know weeknights are just a yeah. nightmare for me. So yeah, Kylo Price uh, kind of ran the day. Yeah, Kylo Price dominated our meta for sure. I'm curious to see how um, how strong it shows up um, on Saturday in Pittman for our next door championship, which I'm hoping we get. You know, maybe like 18 players would be really a really nice turnout for that. I think um, that's my hopeful. I thought we were going to break 30 for this one. We only had 25. Um, Joe opted not to play, which I'm fine with. I, I mean, it's nice to not have a buy, but. Joe just really was focused on, on making sure he was T.O. in and he wanted to put that first. And I, I get that. Like, I, I'm fine either way. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he did. Joe ran a great event. I mean, he did. He did keep it moving. I know that they were just they were just entering everything. But Joe was keeping things moving. He was walking around and active judging, too. If people were making mistakes, he was he was correct. Calling on him. Yeah. Yeah. So he was he did a great job. Yeah, I guess. I mean, this was something to include people in on, too, is what, you know, Tommy Shane and I were talking a little bit about of whether or not, at least at the store championship level, should a TO play. I think, you know, we were all kind of generally on the same page. Shane maybe leaned a little bit more to where they shouldn't. And um, basically, if I think they should if they help stop a buy. But I totally get, I don't want to say that they should, but I could see why they would play. Um, but I also think they should drop if they're the uneven person. Um but yeah, I mean, like having Joe play was obviously great because he was able to catch a few things and be able to answer questions without stopping a game or anything like that. So I see the upsides to uh, to both a TO playing and a TO not playing. Now, if it was like separate rooms or like a larger, I mean, we were at 25. Like once you start to get over like 30 or 35, it's probably tough for a TO um, to manage stuff. But I think it also helped because um, the store kind of did the pairings. Um. Like when we finished, we went to the front desk and reported our scores. So Joe didn't really do that. Yeah, he didn't have to um, collect match slips and and worry about you know prizing. Like he was very he, he had everything. He got there early. He set everything up. He wanted to be hands on. He wanted to just focus on toing. And I, I applaud that. And it's also just yep. like if Joe was to like say play in the event, he's not focused on winning. He's he's really just there so that the person sitting across from him doesn't have to just not do anything. So, I mean, is that like, it's not really that big a deal because in Joe's head, he's not there to win. He's there literally just to make sure the event runs smooth. So I get it either way, but I, I, I think, I think Joe made a good call. Agreed. It was great. Well done top deck. Like we said, the prize support was crazy. Was I mean, they, they gave like six boxes away. It was a $20 entry fee. They were just like handing boxes out to people. It was insane. The first, yeah, I mean, they, they all wound up with what do you get? Like 40 packs or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, forty. I think ATK is the same. I don't know how far down they go. Like eight or top deck was good all the way through. Yeah, they probably. I don't know how far ATK will go down, but I know that uh, winner of ATK this Saturday will also get a uh, forty packs. That's awesome. But yeah, they they then they just raffled off a box. Yep. It's like, <laughs> and it was nice to see the 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 guy Andrew from Alternate Universe who was relatively new. You know, within the last month or two, he just started playing grab the box like that's exactly who you want that box to land on that's it was great yeah i mean i guess you know you can say i'm only saying this because i didn't win it but i feel like if i would have won i would just been like getting it like i bought five boxes i don't need another one just yeah. <laughs> give it I'm to somebody else be money bags like you some of us got mouths to feed jack i'd have been like hell yeah this is mine i gotta i have to give shane stuff too i mean geez do you know what it's like to feed myself uh, do you know i guess that's true my baby really just <laughs> feeds off of my wife at this point so yeah <laughs> You're right my speak my wife's appetite has increased hmm. makes sense <laughs> there you go uh so that i mean that was top deck it was really great it felt and i've said this before store championship is like my favorite season just because of like it's still competitive play but it's just a relaxed one your friends are all there you're like trying to defend your home turf yeah. type thing, which we didn't do because we're garbage. Mm -hmm. um, well, <laughs> but you know, we also uh, were short staffed, so we could blame it on Shane. Actually, to be fair, Let's just the buy is only a thing because Shane wasn't there. Yeah, if Shane was there, you, there I'm we go. Saying, I'm just saying. 
If Shane was there, there's no buy. There's no talk about whether or not Joe should have played. Mm-hmm. God, Shane, yep, you know, man. what's wrong with you, dude? I don't know. Now he's going to a Frisbee tournament, yep. and he won't be there this week. What a bum. Mm-hmm. What a bum. But, yeah, dude, that it was just – it was a blast. My fiance played. Carrie played. She went two and three. Yeah, Carrie was she crushing was a, it. I like her deck. She was only two behind me in the standings and was above me for most of the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she played – um. Cassie and Poe too. It was just like two hit and runs, two quick draws, two impulsives. Just uh, I'm gonna roll out really quick and hit you before you can touch my dice type thing. Yeah. And she played it well. So what do you what do you think of the meta right now? At least I, I like I know it's a small like isolated segment of the country and and the world for the, as far as metas go. But how would you say? Obviously, Kylo Price was strong, um, and in full force. But what do you think of the meta overall? Uh, overall, I love the meta, but uh, I just like, even for this upcoming store championship, I'm like, Oh, like Luke three Ezra two would be a fun deck built to last. Oh wait, it's mono. Um, or what about this deck or this deck? It's like, Oh, it's mono Dooku thousand. Oh, it's mono. Oh, never mind. Like it's, it just, it sucks having Kylo have such a good pairing, but I don't want to see anything happen to Price. But it's like also, and I don't know if I feel like if you take Kylo away, there's still a lot of open space for villains to play. But I also don't want to call for the bounce of the force after like three weeks of store championships. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's too early for that. And it would really suck to have both dark side characters from the two player box be tacked yeah. to the point. I don't. I don't yep. want to call for that. I mean, Kylo felt like he was everywhere. I don't think Kylo Price is going to be the best deck in the meta for long. Um, I think it might be right this second. I also think that we're not seeing the full picture yet because I know that some of the best um, best deck builders um, in the world for this game probably aren't showing what they have because they're saving it for you know, Nova or Gen Con or Europeans or, or whatever it is. I know that yeah. they're, they're holding that back. So there's definitely going to be, um, there's definitely going to be some, some evolving happening soon. I think that Kylo price is a simple enough, um, question to answer. I think that we'll find something that can deal with that. Um, like I said, that the one thing is the deck is not very good in the roll off. It's, it's really not. And if it doesn't get its battlefield, you know, it's not the best Struggle, deck. Yeah. I, I will have a hard time cutting through three characters. I really, on paper, don't think that my my three wide vehicle deck that's rainbow should be a bad matchup for it, other than my one blind spot of needing to alter my mitigation package. And I, I think that this this is a puzzle that can be solved. I don't think you're going to see Kylo Price. I, th- I don't think it's going away, but I don't think it's the end all be all. I think Mill is very strong too. I think I think that. It yeah. could be a rock, paper, scissor, scissor situation where you might have a Kylo Price deck, a vehicle deck, and a mill deck. And they kind of just, you know, each one is, is the other's weakness. So Yeah, no, I, I get that. And I don't even mind mill being strong. It's just like, because mill decks, it, you just change the way you play sometimes and maybe the way you build your deck. Yeah. But it's like with Kylo, it's like, I don't know, I just can't. Like I just can't show up with a mono deck. Like I like for Saturday, I feel like I can't show up with a mono deck, um, which is kind of like it. It just stinks to have that limitation on my deck building. But like you said, I don't think it's in and of itself like it's a broken deck. I don't think a lot of all the cards or character pairings that are uh, dual or tricolored have been explored enough to the extent where they popped up yet. And I do think most content creators that are people that would normally share their decks are probably holding it close because Gen Con. While we record, it's in six days. I think it starts next Wednesday. This is Thursday night. Yeah, I think it's a Thursday it starts. A Thursday? All right. So, yeah, you know, it's in a week. And so they're holding stuff a little bit close to their chest. Um, As they it should. Just stinks I, don't, I don't blame them at all. No, not at all. There's no reason to share it when you have a, a large tournament like that coming up. But like you said, it just stinks because I feel like Kylo has a fine enough matchup against vehicles potentially in a fine enough matchup against mill potentially that he doesn't really care and he could beat a lot of the other decks out there too like if somebody shows up with a mono deck they it's basically like an auto win for him he does he does shape the meta in a in a in a way that might be 
less healthy than some other decks, like you said, because it literally just, it doesn't just eliminate like one type of deck. It eliminates anything that you want to do that's mono color. So it, and it's, yeah, you can play around. Yeah, you can hold great cards, but I'm playing rainbow and I'm holding great cards and I still got blasted by Frenchie in the last round and he wasn't even calling the best, like the optimal color. Like it can happen. But yeah. so if you're playing a, a mono deck, how much worse is that? Or how much more often is that going to happen? It's, it is, it's a, it's an odd way that he affects the meta and uh, it's, it doesn't feel right that a deck or a, a single character should be able to push out, um, you know, like a, like a blue deck, you know, or a yellow deck. And yeah. it is a little, it's a little off putting. I'll, I'll say that, but I, I don't want there to be a balance or I'm not calling for a balance at, at, at all at this point. I, and like I said, I don't think it's going to be the top dog for long. Yeah. I mean, you just got to, it, it's just, I think it's, it's a heavy aggro gauntlet though. <laughs> at the moment. Oh yeah. If, if your deck can't be Kylo price, just sleeve it back up Yeah, <laughs> or uh, unsleeve it. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, Kylo just got taken to new heights with price. I mean, like even being a Sabine player before Kylo Talzin didn't really scare me that much. Um, Kylo Anakin didn't get enough testing to, but I also, the one that I played against was Edwin. So it's, you know, I'm obviously playing one of the best players that could play that deck. Uh, and I still feel like Sabine would have a chance against Kylo in those situations, but, um, and I got, I mean, I guess Kylo could maybe potentially do Kylo price, but just like looking at mono decks, I feel like even old stairs would have had a chance against Kylo Anakin, but now it's like, st- even if you take old stairs against Kylo Price, like I feel like there's it's a little bit of a less disadvantage. Basically, what I'm saying is that this new Kylo deck is a lot better than previous ones we've seen, which makes it tough to then build, like you said. But yeah, I don't know. Balance of the Force would seem premature, and I wouldn't expect anything until after Gen Con yeah. plays out anyway. If, but then it's like if, if of you the wait top two weeks, or Kylo Price at Gen Con, then you might see a Balance of the Force. <laughs> Yeah, but then, yeah, but it's weird too because you figure Gen Con wraps up and then like three weeks later, four weeks later is Nova. Yep. It's like how much time like I don't. You probably won't see a balance until after Nova, if if at all. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. And it's it's kind of str- you're in a strange spot too because with if Galaxy or across the galaxy comes out in November, then and you know after Nova you still have quite a few months of this meta. So you do want to, you do want to do something if it's, if it's called for, but I don't, I still, I don't want to see that happen. I'm just hoping that it's not needed. I don't think yeah. it is. I didn't come away from the event thinking, Oh my God, they need to nerf him. I came away from the event saying, Oh, this is very popular. It's very straightforward. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that these two go together very well and with the battlefield ruling it only reinforced that i think that it was just a a clear choice for an early meta deck you know you're gonna see that big aggro deck early kylo price is this meta's version of that deck i mean but these uh once nova ends that that's just about the end for this meta right i mean um i'm currently looking at september october and then presumably part of november well yeah i'm just saying that um at that, like, what event are there? Any events that happen? No, but I mean, it's, I mean, you, you're not gonna. It's too short of a time period. I, I would rather not see unless it's like clearly just. And and again, I don't think this is the issue. I, I, I don't think that this is that issue. Rather, that like, if something is so vastly broken that you're like, oh my god, we can't do this. It's it's just bad for the game. We need to change it. Then yes, go ahead and change it. But if it's just borderline. And I'm by borderline, I mean even way worse than what I think this is. Then I would rather them not change it for Nova because I don't want there to be a major event such as a national Nova event for you know probably one of the highest participating countries in the United States. So so this is this is going to be a big event. Um, I don't want to see an errata come and just totally just throw the the meta into a blender and then just spit out, you know, all these random decks that no one really has practice with or no knows what to expect because now the meta is so wide open again. Um, so I would rather, cause I want to see the best players work and, and practice and know the matchups and, and then win the event. I don't want to see, you know, Oh, somebody just landed on the right thing and it just so happened to be the right meta call, but really no one knew what was going to be there. 
For instance, Edwin winning worlds, amazing meta call. He knew he was going to fight Sabine. He knew he was going to face uh, stairs. He chose Kylo Anakin and it, and it, it worked wonders for him, but that was a meta call. He knew the matchups. He got his reps in like, that's, that's what I want a champion to be from any of these events. Yeah. And I think we'll get that. I mean, we saw with worlds, they don't want to take that approach. Cause I mean, after regionals, people were calling for Ayla plus one or Sabine plus one. And all they did was lightly touch uh mall's lightsaber and lightly touch uh run interference. And those were, I don't those think there's were any... the right touches. I think, I think Jeremy nailed it. Agreed. Yeah, they de- they definitely were, but it, it's just at this point we probably like I don't even know by the time of uh, Across the Galaxy comes out will Kylo Price like be a thing because like I said like after Nova there's no real events except for the Kappa Cup. If Kylo doesn't get, <laughs> get uh, balanced or errated or something, I don't I, I don't think he's going anywhere at 12 health with those damage sides and that ability. I don't, I don't think he's, I don't think his damage sides are incredible, but they're still 50%. You know, two for one is not great, but if you can eliminate a character or pair some modified sides, then it's very useful. So I, I, I don't think he's going to go anywhere unless there is an errata or a balancing. Or even if we just start to find great decks that are all rainbow colored, you know, like, but even then, if you miss his ability, like you said, he still just has really good damage no, sides and health is what takes him over the top. I think. Um, Agreed. Puts him on on the next level, but yeah, I I, I mean, I, and I don't want to see the 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 game turn into just all rainbow decks either. I mean, I still want yeah. two and one color decks to be viable, but we're in a situation where where mono color decks are, I don't want to say you know not viable because there are plenty of good mono color decks that can win events, you know. But if you see this much Kylo Price as we did at our store, like what was it six out of twenty five? Seven. Seven out of twenty-five. It is going to be tougher for a monocolor deck to succeed in that meta as opposed to a more diverse meta. And part of it's not even just monocolor. Like I could have two colors, but like half my deck be favored in one. I'm like, oh crap, I got to cut. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty <laughs> just, popular. If you're a vehicle deck, red's pro- if a hero vehicle deck, red is probably a little heavier in your deck. Like that's that's normal, and and your opponent should have an idea of what they want to call if they're a good player going into that. Yeah, I mean, that's what, after that tournament, I went back and started making adjustments to my deck. I added um, some pod racers just to add some gray. I switched C-3PO with R2, or switched it to R2, but I think I'll want to go back to C-3PO. I think he's just too good. Um, yeah, 3 is Yeah, honest. just making efforts like that. I like R2. Yeah, th- <laughs> I love R2, but it was like so many times I still have to roll the special. Yeah. But with C3PO, it's just like, wee, roll my dice. All right, what do I want now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like R2 for the... The, the draw. Yeah, the draw is what... Because there's so many yeah. turns where you just have a pile of resources in that deck and you don't have anything yep. to play. And I just... I think that that's really strong. Agreed. Um, yeah, and it, I mean, it just changes the way you build decks. But like I said, like, it's... I'm in the boat where it sucks, where I can't run a monocolor deck or feel comfortable running one, but... I'm probably in the same boat as you where I wouldn't want anything touched before. Yeah, just run five Jalos. Just get it over with. Oh, spicy. Mm-hmm. 30 health, dude. There you go. That's a lot of calls to get right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Until Joe um, shows up with thermal detonators. Yeah, really. And he would, <laughs> honestly. Are you thinking you're going to run the same deck on uh, Saturday? I am definitely going to. That's Yeah, I'm just going to run Afro on Saturday. I haven't gotten a single game in since this past week. I've been working pretty much almost 12 hours every day. Um, so I am trying to be a dad and a husband. <laughs> uh, this Why? Week, and uh, potentially <laughs> maybe get to Joe's tomorrow night, I hope, for maybe cram in like six or seven games just to get my feel back for the deck. I made a lot of drastic changes to it um, to try to solve those problems and, and, and ramp a little harder. See, I'm going full-blown Jack right now. And this is the worst possible spot I could be in. Mm-hmm. Um, like for worlds, like Sabine, I can't tell you how many games I had with that deck. And it's like I'm very much a player where I need reps with my deck to like be good at it. Oh, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> and, it's, and I'm sitting here, dude, going to Joe's. I have one, two, three, four, five decks built, and None of them are hero vehicles, and I'm going to play one of them on Saturday. Well, you, need to, you need to build Afro, my friend. I'm telling you, Afro will be... I'm going to say what Zach Bunn said uh, on the Chance Cube. At some point, 
might not be this set, but at some point Afra will be a problem and will need to be adjusted. Oh yeah. She is going because now they're finally put more droids in. She is insane. I'm telling you, playing BT one or triple zero for one resource, it feels amazing. You need you need to try my Afra deck. It feels incredibly powerful. I have two losses with it, and they were both by like two damage away from victory, and they were both at that store championship and they were against first and second place. All right. I'll have to have you, uh, I'll send the list over, send it to me and I'll bring So that way, if you don't come tomorrow, I'll still be able to get some reps in with yes. the duty. I've got, feedback. I've got a bunch of wild stuff cooking. I've got like DJ Sienna with blockade yeah, or whatever it's called. That. I've heard about that. That's pretty, uh, seems interesting. That's, as, and as then our friend Aldous would say, that's spicy. It's spicy, dude. I built Plo Koon Padawans just because I haven't played it yet and I kind of want to. But like I said, monocolored. Mm-hmm. But I do have it up to like 10 gray cards, which is uh, probably the most you would want in that deck a third. But uh, yeah, at some point, you still don't want to play like suboptimal cards either. It's I mean, you could probably no. get 10 gray that work in there. but Yeah, I, like I have two close quarters, two flanks. Um, two vibros? I'm tr- yeah, two vibro knives, race one ray staff, one stun baton, and then the one that I'm trying, the, the, the same card, the last two cards, are Way of the Light. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Like, it's hard to tell, I feel like, until I play with it, because when I remove dice currently, I don't actively think about whether they're hero or villain or neutral. Yeah. But come to think about it, like, ultimately, this card works on two-thirds of the dice that are out there. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, if you're playing against a hero deck, it doesn't work on any character dice, and that feels <laughs> pretty bad. Um, but I figured I'd just try it out, add some more great cards, see what happens. It's, probably won't be running on Saturday, but I just wanted to play probably suboptimal, with it. but I guess, you know, it could be a meta call. Yeah, I guess it's more of like, yeah, like how suboptimal does it get before it hurts your deck? But If you draw that in uh, a yeah. matchup where you can't use it, like, effectively, like, say, against a hero deck or whatever, it's that's going to hurt you. It's a reroll at that point and that's not you don't ever want to look at a card in your hand and be like oh this is a reroll unless it's like obviously the mill matchup and you've drawn force illusion force illusion is so good that you have to include yeah. it knowing that it's a dead card in the mill matchup where i don't think way of the light is even remotely close to force illusion yeah um i mean hero mill like that's probably where it's the most dead of a card yeah simply because that's just mainly character dice or uh, force meditation, which is also here. But if like if you think about it, just going through like other decks, like even if you play like uh, steps or whatever, like Shoto's ancients heirlooms, um, steps. like they're all neutral. So <laughs> steps. I'm sorry, it just it cracks me up. I, I like there's just some up, still good decks. Uh, Mike's thing where there's just like all the pictures of steps behind them. The <laughs> well, yeah, where Ray's show. walking up the. It's uh, just so weird. Ah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I just, I think in those matchups, there's potentially enough dice where it could work, but against a hero deck, turn one, it's a dead card, no doubt about it. Yeah. Only value, probably round starting round two, but uh, yeah, it's just something to add spice. But I still don't think I would bring a twenty card, a uh, twenty card blue deck to a Kylo meta. Yeah, probably not a good. Idea. But, but yeah, I mean that's just our talks. We'll we'll see how testing goes, and I don't know. I've got some uh. I've got some other spice in my back pocket that we'll see if it works or makes sense on Saturday oh, <laughs> or Friday Saturday. to bring you it just, Saturday. Just bring it. <laughs> Dude, that's what I did for vehicles. Right. So. Um, but yeah, we'll see if that uh, works out for um, on Friday and then I'll talk about it maybe. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll pocket uh, across the galaxy talk um, for next time we record one because it's probably not pressing because it's not coming out till November and everybody's focusing on store champ two we're at an hour and don't want to go much beyond that because it's time to go to bed mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I guess um, just a few announcements um, mm-hmm. uh, in case you haven't seen on our Facebook uh, Shane missed another store championship that all right dude that's is that an announcement like do you I thought that was news I'm sorry the sun rises in the morning. Do you, do you talk about that every Joe, morning? Joe in our Discord's like, there could be a free event at Shane's house, and he would miss it. <laughs> well, we're sponsoring Kappa Cup, and Joe's like, you're going to show up, go there, and then just not sit down to play your game. He's not, he's not going to Kappa Cup. 
I know. Colin. It's only a Saturday. I know. It's yeah. <laughs> he won't go to Top Deck, but he'll drive t- like two hours nah, to Hershey. He won't. He won't be a cap cop. Yo, Shane, I can't wait to hear what he says after he listens to this. Probably just like shut up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um. But, but yeah, so our first uh, actual one, because Shane, again, it's the sun rises. Um, if you've seen our Facebook or Twitter, one of our Patreons, Brian, so shout out to him, of course, mm. for giving us this mall promo. It's, and it's sick. It, 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 I want to play mall so I bad. And it, mall price, new meta. But then it's just like, why don't I just run Kyle? Because <laughs> mall is so sick. It, it does. It looks... It looks really good. So if you're looking to get that, uh, our $5 tier on Patreon, it'll be our reward for August. So once it's billed in August, I'll send that out. Um, Probably, I'll be away next week, so it'll probably go out on the 6th of August. But yeah, either way, if you get billed in August, you'll get that card. Um, And it looks pretty dope. Um, I guess this is a personal announcement. I'll be at Nova now. I signed up today. So if you're going to Nova, just let me know, dude. I'd like to meet up and chat with anybody. Um, and Tommy's going to live through me. So if you need to talk to Tommy, just let let me know. Yeah, Jack I'll, will text me I'll, whatever uh, you tell him to say to me, if <laughs> anybody cares. Exactly. Uh, so I'm excited for that. I, at first, I didn't think I was going to be able to go. But because it actually ends on a Saturday, I'm able to make that, uh, make that track. This Destiny content, at least, is done on Saturday. And that's assuming I make Top Cut anyways. Uh, <laughs> Which right now, I think it's like, I, I think it's sitting 60 people in each wave. They separate in two uh, two waves, and I think it's top 16 from each wave moves on. Hmm. So that's a, it's a pretty high bar, but I'm excited for it. Now I just have to figure out a deck, but I do have a month. Um, Cap Cup is coming up, and that's the second weekend in October, that second Saturday, um, which is the 13th. And we're sponsoring it. Yeah, it'll be just a fun time to come down. There'll be a, a cr- crazy amount of prize support. So you could just check out um, kappacup.net if you want to register and check out you know, just what they're about. Um, if you're looking to fill out your singles, as always, Top Deck TCG and the promo code uh, Golden Dice 10 will get you 10% off. And lastly, this is a new one. Um, so I don't specifically know how it works, but... Um, the Artificery guys, or Pearl Yeti specifically, messaged me and talked about um, like a coupon code. So basically, we advertise it. If you put in a Golden Dice Podcast as you check out, um, it kind of benefits us a little bit, I think, is how it works. Or you get a discount. I don't know exactly. <laughs> I don't really know Either way, when you check out, here's plug. <laughs> <laughs> go to Artif- Artificery. You can buy some of their stuff. They're doing singles now. And then enter our name when you check out, and whatever happens, happens. You just won't be charged extra. And that's all that matters. We are pros here at the Golden Dice Podcast. <laughs> uh, but yeah, felt good to record, man. Anything else? No, I'm I'm thrilled that we got to record. I had a, a good time, and um, I'm looking forward to recording again soon. Hopefully, so uh, we don't just like disappear again for days on end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. That was rough. I was away the last week of June, then it was July 4th, and then I was away the first two weeks of July. So it's been a, life happens. Life happens. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for being patient with us. This week, I feel like it started to boil up. I was getting a few texts. I got a text from like Mr. Chip saying, Yo, dude, Golden Dice, where, like, are you guys still around? <laughs> I don't know. I'm still waiting for so Mr. Chip to come on. I just want to hang out with him. Yeah. Well, it, it's. it stinks because, uh, I mean, we've talked about we were supposed to have Jeremy on, mm. but I still haven't gotten back from. FFG's like PR team about whether or not our questions were okay. <laughs> like, kind of, we didn't even ask anything crazy. Uh, every, but everything's so. like almost irrelevant at this point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And well, I, is it wrong yeah, that I almost pretty. feel worse about getting blown off by Mr. Chip than Jeremy? Like Jeremy, like I kind of expect him to blow stuff, but like I'm like, man, Mr. Chip, I really, I really want to be your friend. Come, come talk to me. It's got better things to I do. Know. We're the little people. <laughs> But we're, we're looking on, uh, yeah, getting him on. And we've talked to uh, Bobby Sapphire before. Uh, I was talking to him in June. But like I said, July was crazy. And this is our first episode in July, I think. So, um, And we might have recorded, I think, July 1st. I don't remember. Uh, but, yeah, so ideally we get a few guests coming on soon. And, um, yeah, thanks for hanging in there while we were away. And we will uh, catch you guys next time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.